bless God. Good morning. Welcome to our uh, morning devotion. Today is Tuesday. So I pray that all of you will be blessed by God's word. And I pray that the word of the Lord will penetrate your spirit and your faith will increase and your knowledge in your relationship with God. Our text for today is in Philippians chapter, oh, Ecclesiastes, sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 9 to 13. So if you have your Bible with you, uh, join me. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart. Yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Bless his words. Let us pray. Abba Father, we give you all the glories and honor and praises today. We ask your sent spirit to help us to know you, to inspire us through his word, and bring understanding in our hearts, especially in our relationship with you. Abba, our Father, increase our faith. We pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. In, in this letter of Song of, of Solomon, he wants us to, to receive a satisfaction in our lives, to enjoy it. But your ability to find satisfaction in your life and work depends to a large extent upon your attitude. Do you know that our mindset affects our attitudes or our behavior? So it's very important for us to receive a true concept of God, a true view of God, a true view of his creation a true view of his beauty so you will become dissatisfied if you lost the sense of purpose God intended for your life God has put a purpose in you and if you lost the sense of God's intended purpose for your life you will not enjoy the beauty of life so the writer solomon enjoy the beauty of life because of his view in god he know his purpose to be a king and to build the house of God whose visions come from his father David. So in verse 11, the Bible says, God has made everything beautiful in its time. So God has made everything beautiful in its time. So God know the right timing of doing something. And in that time, He always do it beautifully. 
So the verse says also, He has put eternity into man's heart in verse 11. Yet so that he cannot find out what has God has done from the beginning to the end. So in your life, in my life, God has planted eternity. Not only for you and for me, but in human life. God has placed within the human heart an inherent desire for more than just the earthly. Human beings want to live forever and find eternal value in the world and the activities of life. That's why Solomon wrote in his books that everything is futile without God because he knew that God has placed within his heart or human being an inherent desire for just just not the earthly things but to find eternal value in the world and activities of life. Consequently, all that we gain, material things, fame, promotion, or secular activities of life, and the pleasures of this earth will never fully satisfy us. We always want something even if we acquired everything. There is always a vacuum. There is always something that is missing. Because what the verse 11 says, God has planted eternity in human heart. This means that we can never be completely satisfied and enjoy the beauty of life with earthly pleasures and pursuits. Many people want to travel in different places. Many people want to eat the cravings of their taste. But after all of it, there's still a longing and a vacuum in their heart. Why? Because we are created in God's image. So, God has put eternity into our hearts. No? So, in verse 12 of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Solomon said, I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Let us read it again. I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. To be happy and do good are worthy goals for life. No? Like the community pantry. Like the helping hands. So to be happy and do goods are worthy goals for life. But we can pursue them in the wrong way. God wants us to enjoy life when we have the proper view of God. With that, we discover that real pleasure is found in enjoying whatever we have as gifts from God, not in what we accumulate. Like Paul said, in, in every situation I am, I am content. People are always want to accumulate to enjoy life. 
But after they have it, they found out it's not the true joy in life. But when we have the proper view of God, we discover that real pleasure, real enjoyment is found. No? Whatever we have as gifts from God. Not in what we accumulate. So, when you have this view, in whatever condition and situation you are, then you are enjoying life. In verse 13, also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. The ability to enjoy life and live it properly is a gift from God that comes only when we are brought into a right relationship with Him and sincerely submit ourselves to Him as our Lord and God. He then gives us joy in what we do. Long, long time ago, I remember a man in Iloilo, way back 1985. His life is miserable. He, he wants to kill someone and he wants to kill himself. But when the Lord found him and submit himself to him and then because of that, his view was changed. And then it's the beginning of his transformation. And then one day, he wants to leave. He wants to enjoy life now. Why? Because he found his purpose. So the ability to enjoy life and live it properly is a gift from God that comes only when we are brought into a right relationship with Him. If you submit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ and have a wonderful relationship with Him, then you will enjoy life and live it properly as a gift from God. Paul the apostle was in prison. He was chained because he proclaimed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think it is a crime to share the love of God, to share the grace of God, to help people to find real meaning of life? Is it a crime? But Paul was in prison because of that. But when he was in prison, he wrote to the brethren in Philippians. And in verse 4 of Philippians 4, Rejoice in the Lord always again. I will say rejoice. How can a man inside the prison said that we need to always rejoice? And then he said, I will say rejoice. How this man Paul rejoicing in time of his imprisonment? How he enjoyed the beauty of life when he was inside the dungeon or the darkened places in imprisonment, alone, a solitary place. How this man Paul rejoicing and enjoy life in time of this? Because he views life in God's view. He said in his letter, 
For to me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. So he look at it, that to die is to gain because of the eternal life. The eternity that God has put in him and in us. So joy is an integral part of our salvation in Christ. Enjoying life, the beauty of it is not earthly, but the beauty of the future. That one day, we will be with Him. And we will see the perfection of His creation. That we will live and enjoy life in eternity. So joy is an integral part of our salvation at Christ. It is an inner peace and delight in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the blessings that flows from our relationship with Him. So let our Father God help us in the moment of this day to see and enjoy the beauty that He brings into our lives. as we also look toward eternity. Let God open our mind and let us enjoy the beauty of life in every situation where we are. Let us pray. Father, We give you the highest praises and glory. Thank you for putting eternity in our hearts. And we can enjoy life, the beauty of it, even in the middle of ungodly and bad situation in life. I pray to open our hearts and our minds to view God's view concerning life. And we know like Paul, we will enjoy life, even the darkest part of our situation. Father, thank you. Father, I pray for your people. I pray for the hands of God Almighty to protect them. I pray in Jesus' name for the hands of God's blessing to bless them and multiply, O Lord, whatever they touch. Father, I pray to protect their loved ones. I pray for the release, the peace, and the joy in life that comes from you. Father, thank you for you created the beauty of life. in us. Thank you for the future. Thank you for the eternity. Thank you for eternal life. Father, thank you so much. Protect them in their going out and coming in. And let your shalom, your peace be with them and their household. Thank you, Father. This we ask in prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, God bless you all. And see you uh, next week. May God's blessing be with you and your loved ones. Good morning.